Hey, hi, hello, and welcome back, everybody. I am Dana the Phantom, and today we are on another subject of our sustainability talks. Now, for those of you who are just joining us, I am going to be speaking about sustainability in fashion. And sustainability in fashion is essentially how long our planet can sustain us on our consumption of fast fashion. And the answer is not long. Between poor ethical practices and the damage it does to our environment, fast fashion is very quickly killing fashion industry and our planet. However, there are so many ways for you to be sustainable in your own life and still enjoy fashion and clothing. Today, we're gonna to be discussing the life cycle of your clothing, from how you buy it to how you get rid of it. We're gonna be doing a quick breakdown to get a better understanding of your closet and your own lifestyle. So, let's get to it. To start, how you buy your clothes is really important. In the last video, we talked about the few questions you can ask yourself when you're about to get into buying something. And that usually is a way for you to talk yourself out of something or solidify how much you want it. What do I already have in my closet that would make this work? Would I have to buy anything to make it work? Is it a color or cut I wear a lot? Or is it something that I could see myself wearing more? Am I buying this just because it's a trend or because it's cheap? Or do I actually like it? It may also be best to look at the tag inside of your clothes. Take for instance, this really weird sweatshirt I got at Papaya several years ago that I bought for a cosplay and I never used. However, if you look inside at the tag, you'll usually see the fiber content of it from anything from polyester to spandex to cotton. So mine is on the primary part, it is 96 polyester, 4% spandex, and the contrast is 62% polyester, 34% rayon, and 4% spandex, which means at the end of the day, this isn't really gonna biodegrade. You want to try and focus on buying more natural fibers like wools or cottons, because at the end of the day, they will biodegrade. Polyester, spandex, and other synthetics aren't going to biodegrade as naturally, or if at all. It also helps that if you don't wanna buy natural leather to also steer, steer clear of vegan leathers. Despite the fact that vegan leathers uh, state that they are made out of plant fibers, the processes that they go through in order to be made into pleathers makes them a synthetic and they're not going to biodegrade as easily. And other vegan leathers are mostly plastics anyways, so you're not really going to find something that's going to biodegrade at the end of the day. There are some newer fibers out there like mushroom or even beets that have been used to make leathers, but they're not as widely available yet, so we still have to wait a little bit longer. So a good question to ask whenever you're buying something is, how much of this is going to go away at the end of its life cycle? These questions can really pare down how much you buy when you go shopping. But now, how do you decide where to shop? Most of the stores that sell up and coming trendy clothes like H&M, Shein, Forever 21 are considered fast fashion. And the reason they're considered fast fashion is because of how quickly they release their clothing. Stores like these have up to 52 micro seasons. Micro seasons are basically seasons in between the regular four seasons. One store I worked at had about eight seasons. It had the four seasons and then the four transitional seasons, which is pretty average. You want something to wear whenever you're transitioning between the seasons where it's a little too hot or a little too cold on random days, especially here in Georgia. So that's a little more understandable than 52 micro seasons. When companies release clothing this quickly, the trends they pick up on end up passing really quickly for the next new trend. And that leaves the clothes that haven't sold to sit on clearance racks forever to just sit and sit and sit until they're finally discarded. And the way a lot of stores discard their clothing is by damaging them beyond belief, taking a pair of scissors to them and tearing them to shreds so dumpster divers can't even get a hold of them. The faster apparel companies release fashion, the more likely their clothes are to be poorly designed, made, and maintained, making them obsolete within a few wears. Shopping from these types of stores should be kept to, to a minimum, or if possible, halted altogether. I know I personally still shop at a few of these stores, but I've managed to bring it down to one or two vis visits a year, and a lot of the time I don't even buy anything while I'm there. However, whenever you're looking for a new place to shop, shopping small businesses with limited runs of their fashion not only allows you to support artists, but it also keeps you from buying fast fashion. Small businesses with limited runs of their fashion and actual seasonal fashion tend to give you way more unique pieces. And the creators are more likely to give you something that's actually good because they care about what you receive and they care about their art. While this tends to be a little bit more expensive, it also makes you value your clothes more. You're more likely to take better care of them than the $3 shirt you got off of Shein. With small run fashion, you also get way more unique styles that no one else has, and you can have a little bit more fun with your fashion. The same thing goes for thrifting. A lot of the trends I've seen coming up lately
lately have been heavily based in 80s and 90s fashion, which is exactly what's in thrift stores and vintage shops. You're more likely to find extremely unique pieces that no one else has anymore. And it leads you to be able to do a thing called upcycling. Upcycling is essentially where you take a recycled piece of clothing or multiple and mash it together with a few other pieces in order to make it something new. This is where it comes in handy to know how to sew because sometimes you'll find that one piece that is so perfect, except it's just missing something. And if you learn how to sew, you can usually fix it up to be exactly what you're looking for. This not only saves a lot of money, but you get something wholly unique out of it, which is so cool. Loving your clothes is the first step to wanting to keep them for a long time. So when shopping, it's very important to buy what makes you happy and things that will continue to spark joy, as Marie Kondo says. Which brings us to another good point. How do you maintain your clothing so that it lasts you longer? Clothing can be anywhere from mending to stain removal to how you wash it. Clothing usually comes with a set of instructions on how to care for it, and it usually will look something like this. However, it's usually better to wash your clothes fewer times within its lifetime. Most jeans don't require frequent washing. Things like t-shirts, workout gear, and underwear tends to need to be washed every time though. However, a way to make them last longer is instead of throwing them in the washer and dryer, try hand washing them. It also helps the fibers, especially in synthetics, last a little bit longer. The motion from washing machines can oftentimes rub the materials together in a way that makes them a lot more fragile. And then when you apply heat, that can also break down the fibers. Most countries outside of the United States don't actually even have dryers in their household. Clothesline drying is still very, very popular in a lot of countries. Whenever you line dry your clothing, the light from the UV rays actually disinfects your clothing further. And it actually brightens your clothing as well, way better than bleach would. Fewer wash cycles also can save a lot of water and energy, so. As it comes to dealing with stains, there are so many stain types and material concerns to deal with whenever you're working with your clothing. And there are so many people out there with all sorts of stain removal trickery to get that out. It oftentimes just takes a quick Google of stain type plus what clothing type you have. I cannot even begin to tell you guys how many times I've Googled how to get a coffee stain out of a cotton shirt. Hundreds of folks everywhere have all sorts of tips and trickeries to getting rid of stains stains, and they're all over the internet. However, stains should be dealt with immediately. If they don't come out with the first wash, do not dry them. Try another stain removal trick and try again until the stain comes out. As soon as it's dried in there, it's in there for good. You don't always have to use big chemicals or a lot of different products to do it. There's a lot of homemade recipes that are used to get rid of stains. A lot of the time it's things that you already have in your house. It's good to know the natural remedies. If they worked hundreds of years ago, they still work now. Now, when your clothes do eventually get a hole or lose a button, this is where mending comes in handy handy. Everyone should learn how to sew. From reattaching buttons to fixing the hole in the knee of your jeans, or even those pesky belt loops that pop off whenever we tug on our jeans, mending can bring new life to your clothing and even make it last a lot longer. And there's also ways to mend your clothing in really unique ways that are really, really fun to try. There's different embroidery techniques or patch techniques that you can use to bring new life to your clothing and make it something entirely new. That is again where upcycling comes in handy. I I've used so many pieces of my old clothing that have fallen apart to make other things in my wardrobe. So there's always good ways for you to work around it. Again, everyone should learn basic sewing skills. Now what do you do if it's no longer sparking joy? What's to be done with these old clothes that we no longer wear? Most people go with the donation route. They send it off to Goodwill and just forget it ever happened, brush their hands off, and they're done. But a lot of people don't know how you're supposed to donate your clothes. When donating clothes, you really need to pay attention to how it's cared for. If it hasn't been washed recently, throw it in the wash really quickly to make sure it's still clean. Not only that, but make sure that any holes or missing buttons are reattached because a lot of the time donation sites will just throw them away if they're missing something like that. Any stains need to be taken care of and gotten rid of before you even think about donating them. And instead of donating them to places like Goodwill, which is known for its mistreatment of their disabled workers, or Salvation Army, which has been very well known for their homophobia and transphobia in the past, think of other places in your area that might need them. There's a lot of women's shelters in every state and every city that need extra clothing for women who have had to flee their homes. 
Homeless shelters always need clothing, especially during the winter time. Helping your local houses people when they need it most is really important. And we also need to think about how many of those people can't get access to the resources we have. There's also queer homeless outreach program. These programs usually provide gender conforming clothing for people who've had to run away from home and are no longer able to take care of themselves or house themselves. But if you take a little time and do a little bit more research in your area, there's plenty of places that you can donate other than those two. Now, if it's something that you haven't worn very often and you feel like you haven't gotten your money's worth out of it and it's still good quality clothing, you can also think about reselling your clothing. There's plenty of resale places that you can go to and hopefully get a bit of money back out of it. Places like Plato's Closet, Thread Up, or even Depop where you can sell your own clothing. These sorts of places are really, really nice to either get secondhand clothing or sell your own. Online secondhand stores are honestly on the up and up lately and it's a good way to feel like you aren't wasting your money on the clothes that you have already bought. And here we are at the end of the life cycle of your clothing, as you know it. It's still good to pay attention to how you buy your own clothing. You don't want to think of your clothing as buying it and then throwing it away. You want to think of your clothing as when you buy it, you are willing to let it go and let it be reused or repurposed into something new. Your clothing has a life cycle, just like anything else on this planet. You have to be conscious of how you buy it, how you care for it, and how you dispose of it at the end of the day. And now I have another challenge for you guys. Go into your closet and see if you have a wardrobe. How many outfits can you make out of as few pieces as possible? Can you make more than one outfit with the same few pieces? Tag me at the Fantoom on Instagram and TikTok or at the Fantoom Cause on Twitter and use the hashtag fashionably functional wardrobe so that I can see your results. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I would love it if you would leave a like down below. If you wanna see more stuff like this or more cosplay related content in the future, don't hesitate to subscribe. There's gonna be more coming out soon. If you have any questions or you wanna let me know how your closet inventory went from the last video, go ahead and leave those down in the comments below. I would love, love, love to hear from you guys. Thanks again so much for watching. I really, really do appreciate it. I hope you have a wonderful day, wonderful week, wonderful year. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Uh, bye!